Hello, we'll be getting started in just one minute. Thank you. Okay, I think I have everything I need. This is what we're here to talk about today. So if you've come to the wrong webinar, not too late. Uh, I wish you good afternoon. My name is Mark Mamagonian. I'm the Director of Academic Affairs at the National Association for Armenian Studies and Research, Nasser, and on behalf of Nasser and the co-sponsors of today's program, uh, namely the Armenian Film Foundation and the Arat Eskijan Museum, I welcome you. Uh, please allow me to just make a few brief announcements of upcoming events that are occurring over the next week or so that I hope you will be interested in. Uh, uh, excuse me, Friday and Saturday, uh, March 17th and 18th, the conference, international conference entitled Armeno Indica, Four Centuries of Togetherness and Familiarity organized by the Richard Hovhannisian Chair of Modern Armenian History at UCLA and co-sponsored by the UCLA Fowler Museum, the Armenian Study Center at the Promise Armenian Institute, the USC Dornsreif Armenian Institute, Nasser, the Naragatsi Chair of Armenian Studies at UCLA and the von Grunbaum Center for Near Eastern Studies at UCLA will be taking place in person at UCLA and online. <clears throat> this is a conference of I think that's that's a conference I think that's unprecedented in its scope and depth in taking a look at the um, multiple centuries of Armenian and Indian interaction and, and cooperation, I guess you could say, in, in many regards. Please, if you are able to attend in person in Southern California, please do so or, or watch online. Next Tuesday, March 21st at 7 p.m. Eastern. Um, please join us for uh, uh, an event organized by Project Save Armenian Photograph Archives and co-sponsored by Nasser, Conversations on Photography with scholar David Lowe, who is the author of a, an outstanding new book on photography in the late Ottoman Empire, uh, Armenian photography. Next Saturday, uh, excuse me, a week from Saturday, March 25th, another important conference uh, taking place at UCLA, What's Next? Armenian Genocide Restitution in the Post-Recognition Era, organized by the Armenian Genocide Research Program at the UCLA Promise Armenian Institute and co-sponsored by the Loyola Law School Center for the Study of Law and Genocide, Nasser, the Armenian Bar Association, and the Promise Institute for Human Rights at UCLA School of Law. Again, this is an in-person event at UCLA that will also be streaming live uh, online. Please attend if you can. And lastly, and with more than a little more than a little embarrassment, I should mention that tomorrow evening at the Nasser building in Belmont, as well as online, there will be a program marking the 25th anniversary of Nasser's academic director who will engage in conversation with Dr. Khachig Muradia. All are invited to attend. I would call this an act of shameless self-promotion, except that I'm a little ashamed <laughs> to be doing it. Uh, so <laughs> nevertheless, uh, there you have it, moving right along. Um, today's program is of special significance, occurring as it does, and not coincidentally, on the 102nd anniversary of the shooting of Talat Pasha in Berlin. Today, we focus on the publication of the first English language translation of Solomon Talirian's memoir, uh, in English, Remembrances, the Assassination of Talat Pasha, published by the Gomidas Institute last year, uh, and originally published in Armenian in Cairo as Solomon Talirian, Veri Shumner. All involved in this project are to be congratulated for making this important text available in English, and special thanks go to the Gomidas Institute, which has published so many important and useful translations over the past decades. Now, we have with us first our friend and colleague, Maggie Mangasarian-Goshen, the director of the Art Eskijan Museum and an invaluable partner on so many projects. And I would like to ask Maggie, please, to say a few words, Maggie. Thank you, Mark, and congratulations on your great achievements. 
outstanding work for the last 25 years. I truly have enjoyed your programs and looking forward for more programs. Um, and thank you, NASA, for hosting today's event. I have to say that when Carla mentioned about the book, and I said, here we go, another uh, Tehillirian book, but I was wrong. I have to admit it. This book was fascinating, interesting, well-researched. I thought I was reading not only the bio of Tehillirian or his journey, but as a micro history of Armenian genocide, all compiled into one. So Bedo, my hats out to you, to Carla, and to uh, Dr. Uh, Ara Sarafian for this outstanding book. I highly recommend it. And I do hope that this book becomes a uh, mandatory to any Armenian genocide education program. It is a must. Back to you, Mark. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Maggie. And uh, I, I would be remiss if I did not mention that the book is, is available from the Nasser Bookstore and from other fine Armenian book sellers. Uh, so please do look into finding a copy for yourselves to, to purchase and, and support the work that was done to produce it. Uh, I would now like to ask another dear friend and colleague, Dr. Carla Garapedian, filmmaker and member of the board of directors of the Armenian Film Foundation, who wrote the preface to this new translation, to, to say a few words as well. Carla, thanks for being here. Thank you, Mark. And uh, thank you, Maggie, for, for that recommendation and for those words. Um, I really appreciate your support in the process of, of getting the book ready for publication. So thank you very much. Um, and, you know, it is this book that is the original source of a discussion today. This is the, it has a red leather cover and uh, you may find it on the bookshelves of some of your oldest family members. It was first published in Armenian in 1953 uh, by Husaper in Cairo. Husaper is the publishing organ of the ARF. It was the publishing organ of the ARF. Back in 2009, Beto Demirjan and I, we met together because I was interested in dramatizing the trial of Sogman Talarian in Berlin. Now, I knew about this book, but needed someone whose Armenian was good enough to translate it for me. So, Beto and I sat together in Watertown, where he was working at the time, and over three days, he patiently translated it for me on the fly, one page at a time. Fast forward 10 years. I met Ara Serafian with the Gomidas Institute in London. Gomidas publishes, amongst other things, primary sources related to the history of the Armenian genocide. Now, Ara was interested in publishing an English translation of this book. And that's how the journey began of the new book that you just saw Mark hold. As the process of translating began with Beto, there were new developments. Namely, the study by Yervant Pambukian, published in the journal Them. Pambukian found the original correspondence between the parties writing and editing this book, including Talarian and Vahan Minahorian and Simon Vratsian. What was the process of writing, editing, revising, and finally publishing the 1953 memoir? What was deleted? What was added? The new study by Pambukian gives us new insight into this process. And we discover, as Ara Serafian writes in his introduction to the book, it was very much a joint enterprise. For many of us, the story about what happened in Berlin on March 15, 1921, is fascinating. It's like a crime drama. We want to know about Sogoman and Talarian because what he did was, let's face it, historic. The trial itself raises questions about vigilante justice and humanitarian law. Raphael Lemkin, who coined the word genocide, cited this trial as one reason why he was motivated to create the legal concept of genocide and push for the UN Convention on the Prevention of Genocide. Why, he asked, was Sogamon Talarian forced to take the law into his own hands? Why was there no international law to prosecute the mass murderer Tala Pasha? That was Lemkin's question. But what did Talarian himself say? Well, unless you could get hold of the 1953 book and read Armenian well enough to comprehend it, you wouldn't know. It seemed to me making Talarian's story available in English, it might help us understand his perspective, the perspective of an important character in history. Bottom line, it's a primary source. 
Now, before we hear from Beto Demirjan, a teaser. Last September, a trip was made to Yerzinga and the Kemak region in Turkey to show where Sogomon Talarian came from. So think of this little eight minute film as a scene setter for our discussion today. Roll film, Mark. Okay, I will do that. Let's hope it's that simple. Sogomon Talarian is a name many know because of one day in Berlin, March 15, 1921. Talarian shot and killed the former leader of Ottoman Turkey, Talat Pasha, who had escaped to Berlin in 1918 at the end of the First World War. Talarian was tried for murder, but remarkably he was found not guilty, and the man he killed was killed in the... Sorry, something happened there. What, what was the video working? It stopped. It was stopping oh. and starting. Um, do you still have the old version on your computer? Although this one should work. Uh, I'm gonna try using a different player. Okay. Sorry about that. Sogomon Talarian is a name many know because of one day in Berlin, March 15, 1921. Talarian shot and killed the former leader of Ottoman Turkey, Talat Pasha, who had escaped to Berlin in 1918 at the end of the First World War. Talarian was tried for murder, but remarkably he was found not guilty and the man he killed was revealed in the trial to be a mass murderer of the Armenian population in Turkey in what would later be called a genocide. Members of Talarian's family were killed in the genocide. Most of the 37,000 population of Yerzinga province, where Talarian lived, were exterminated. In his memoir, Talarian tells us what he saw during the genocide after he left his home in Yerzinga in 1913, and when he returned there three years later. Armenians had been living in Yerzinga for centuries. From the Middle Ages, because of its location on the Silk Route, it was a center of trade and commerce. Armenians only made up a third of the population in the 18th and 19th centuries, but they were central to the business that prospered there. These photos were taken in 1907 and show a city that isn't there anymore. Yerzinga was hit by a major earthquake in 1939. The city relocated a few miles away. So the places that Armenians lived in, worshipped in, before the genocide, now no longer exist. The Talarian family moved to Yerzinga in 1905 when Sogomon was nine years old. They had moved from a village nearby in Kemach. We're Kemach here. We need to cross the river. We'll go through the old Armenian quarter and our destination will be Pakaric, the main one where Talirian comes from. Um, and we'll be nosing around that area and see what we can find. Pakarish is located in the Kemach region. This is an over 100 mile long gorge with the legendary Euphrates River winding through it. 
it's a place now promoted for tourism. In 1915, though, it was a major killing region during the Armenian Genocide. So how many people might have come this way, Armenians? Upwards of 100,000 people would have come this way, assuming they were killed before they got here. So 100,000 might be a good figure to work with. How many these made it all the way through? Less than 100,000, especially after the main gorge of the Kema. We find an area outside Yerzinga which could have been a staging area for the thousands of Armenians marched into the gorge itself. Accounts say the staging location was three hours outside the city, which puts it around here. The gorge has steep cliffs. The Armenians who were forced here had no escape, no point of return. Thousands were killed. Eyewitnesses reported that there were so many dead bodies in the river, the direction of the Euphrates River actually changed course. It's here that many dead bodies were said to have amassed. So many killed, the river ran red. Only a few hours outside of Yerzinga, it feels as if we're in the middle of nowhere. We're here to see Pakarish, the village where Sogomon Talarian was born in 1896. In 1914, around 2,000 people lived in Upper and Lower Pakadish. At the turn of the last century, bee farming was one of the main businesses here. In the larger Pakadish village, a local shows us the ruined Armenian church, possibly where Sogomon Talarian was baptized. We're shown another building, where a second Armenian church used to be. It's now a small mosque. Inside a closet, we see the remnants of the old Armenian altar. It's a beautiful place, high up the mountain. But the village is isolated in the winter. Even now, it's hard to make a living. In 1905, Sogomon's father decided his family was better off living in Yerzinga. Who would have known what would happen ten years later? What exactly did happen to Sogomon's family? Sogomon left Yerzinga in 1913 to join his father's business in Serbia. After the First World War started, it became clear Armenians were being targeted in Turkey. He volunteered to fight with General Antrenik's army and returned to Erzinga in 1916, one year after the genocide began. Most of the Armenian community was gone. He wanted to know what happened to his mother. One of Sogman's jobs was to find Armenian orphans, many of whom were scattered in the countryside and living with Kurds. He found his niece, Armenui. Armenui told him his mother, brother, and sisters-in-law had all died in Kemach. One account um, talks of the wounded by the, by the riverside. It talks of both dead and wounded fallen down by the riverbanks and the washed up corpses or dying. And that's where you hear the description of the river turned red. Our time is limited here. We've seen the fields approaching the gorge. We've seen the gorge itself with its steep rock faces, the point of no return. We've seen the infamous bridge and the river, the great and mighty Euphrates River, that was called the river that ran red. There's only one place left to see on this trip. The Armenian church in a village called Tortan, now called Doan. Built in the fourth century, it stands alone, weakened, hollowed out by treasure hunters. 
but still there. Its past is hard to erase completely. There's a cross there. Another cross here. Three crosses. You see? Mm -hmm. Like Sogomon Talarian's life, it's a story that is still being told. I trust that worked okay. Yeah, the it was phasing a bit. I think you didn't like the codec, but it uh, it looked like a slideshow and not a film. But we got the picture. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, you know, we've only been doing this for three years, I, I guess. guess. So uh, <laughs> taking a while to iron out all the all the kinks. Well. Carla, thank you for sharing that You're video welcome. with us. It will be, perhaps it will be posted uh, yeah. somewhere for viewing and people can view it in its more proper form. Yes. Uh, okay, very good. And we'll put up the link when when, when we have that. Okay. Uh, let us now hear from uh, Beto Demergen. Beto is the translator of Remembrances and was born in Beirut, Lebanon. He is a graduate of the Melkonian Educational Institute in Cyprus and studied economics and European Union integration at the University of Piraeus in Greece. He has worked as a journalist, as communications and public relations director uh, uh, at the ANC Europe, and as the office coordinator of the Artsakh Republic permanent representative to the Middle East. And in 2020, Beto settled in Armenia in the province of Lori, where he headed the COAF Smart Center. And he is currently, and recently, uh, communications and PR director of the Tufenkian Foundation in Yerevan, a position I believe he just started and for which we congratulate him and, and the Tufenkian Foundation. So uh, let us hear from Bedo and please use the Zoom Q&A function uh, as always to submit your questions. I'm almost sure that works. So thank you. Bedo. Hi, hello everyone. Uh, thank you, Mark and Nasser for this opportunity, especially on this day. Uh, it's a very special day. Uh, thank you, Carla, as well, the, and, and the Armenian uh, Film Association, as well as uh, Mary for your uh, support for this uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, this is very important to me, first of all. And uh, the issue of uh, Tehlirian and the nemesis, uh, it's something that I grew up with. Uh, being born in Lebanon, as you mentioned, uh, especially in the late 70s, early 80s, uh, we grew up uh, with these issues. We were at the Armenian school in the Agum, in the Armenian clubs. So the issue had always uh, interested me. And uh, when Carla and I met in 2009, I think it was in Amsterdam, she, we had arranged uh, her movie back then, the documentary, The Screamers. And uh, afterwards, we in during discussions, Carla was interested in learning uh, more on the Tehlirian, on the Nemesis uh, operation. And I had read uh, some books, some uh, newspapers, and I was telling her that there is this, there is that, uh, this information, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and then I found uh, the book uh, in my lab library, and I started gradually, uh, page by page, very uh, quickly, briefly, uh, translating them for Carla and uh, <laughs> sending them via email. I was in Lebanon back then. Uh, she was in uh, California. So this is how we were communicating. Uh, but the issue of translating the book was always with me. And uh, it had reached a point that I had definitely to translate it. And why translate it? Um, because as you know, most of you know that the issue of uh, the Operation Nemesis, uh, Tehlirian, is an issue that is, uh, is used and abused by ev almost everyone, uh, by Armenians, 
by our adversaries. Uh, each takes bits and pieces of the whole issue and they try to present it as they wish to. And I wanted to say the story, uh, this heroic story uh, from the person who is uh, the most uh, reliable one to say it, so Amo Tehlirian himself. We know that uh, Arshavir Shiragyan's book, The Legacy, has been translated into English by his, by, by his daughter, but uh, Tehlirian's was never translated. Um, Eric Pogosian mentions in his book that someone has translated the book for him to write uh, his book, The Operation Nemesis. I have not seen the Armenian translation and I don't know if that one was uh, to be publicized or no. But nevertheless, uh, I said that I will go on with the translation and uh, now I'm really glad and proud and happy to say that it's uh, already in the bookstores. And while I was uh, translating uh, the book, I, uh, I saw that Tehlirian has been with many prominent persons during that time of history. Uh, he's been in many places. And for someone who doesn't know the story, doesn't know the faces, the people, uh, would have difficulties in putting things in context. So during translation, I thought, okay, annotations would be good to, to accompany the book. And uh, there were many, many of them. Uh, Ara Sarafian, during uh, the editing process, uh, we decided with Ara to leave some of those uh, annotations out because uh, the book would be really, or a very uh, bigger one than what it is. So we kept the most uh, necessary books. So in any case, anyone who is interested in learning more about the book, more about the people, the places, the dates and the historical events that uh, Sohomont Ehlirian is referring to. So they have to look up uh, in a dictionary on, on Google or uh, anywhere else because they, there are too many uh, notes and places and areas that he has been with. And during this event, I, during the translation, I noticed that uh, because he's been around a lot in the South Caucasus, in the Black Sea region mainly, in Western Armenia, in historical Armenia. So with Aras Arafian, we decided to include maps as well. So we put his whole uh, route, his whole journey in perspective, in context. So the English translation of uh, Tehlirian, it's uh, his book. And uh, on the cover of the book, you will see that it said that as related to Vahan Minahorian. Uh, Vahan Minahorian is a very, very interesting person. And uh, he has already written a book because he was a survivor of the Armenian genocide. And Tehlirian and Minahorian, they used to live in Yugoslavia back then in Belgrade. And uh, Minahorian could write very, very well. By the way, Vahal Minahorian has been also uh, a member of the parliament of the first Armenian Republic from 1918 to 1920. So he was a very well uh, prepared uh, person. He could really put into words what Tehlirian was saying to him. So they both sit together in Belgrade and uh, Tehlirian in the early 1940s during uh, the Second World War narrates the story to Vahan Minahorian and Vahan Minahorian uh, writes it down. So, it's a, so the book is a collaboration of uh, different people. And I must really mention Arshalus Astazadarian as well another prominent, prominent uh, figure. He was also with the Tehlirian and Minahorian, and they all were together, putting together uh, Tehlirian's book, uh, his remembrances, Ver um, And then the book was uh, ready to be published in 1953 by Husaper, as Carla mentioned, in Cairo, in Egypt. And this is where things get interesting. Um, Tehlirian is forced to leave Yugoslavia after the Second World War. He moves to Casablanca with his family and uh, he starts uh, writing the letters 
from Casablanca to Cairo to the editors of uh, Husaper. And the editors are Simon Vratsian, the last uh, prime minister of Armenia of 1918, uh, Capriel Lazian, Vahan Navasartian, all very prominent figures of the Armenian community and especially in the diaspora. And they are all members of the ARF, the Dashnak Sutyun, uh, highest uh, body, which is called the Bureau. So they were all together there in Cairo, in Husaper. And as Carla mentioned, the VEM uh, journal and the article in it, the first person I went to, I saw before starting the translation uh, was Yervant Pambukian himself, uh, a historian, and he is the archivist, the responsible for the ARF archives, and he has published many, many articles and books. So he was the first person I went to. Uh, I told him, uh, Sireli Anger Yervant, uh, dear Yervant, I am willing to translate uh, Soamo Tehliria's memoirs from Armenian into English. I would really like to know if there are any copyrights issues, anyone I need to talk to before I start, and anything else that you think important or necessary uh, to know. He said, uh, no, everything is fine. You can just go ahead. And I really, really wish you to finish this uh, very important job. So I had uh, his uh, blessings to start this uh, translation. And I'm really glad to say that when I was in Beirut a couple of uh, months ago, I gave a signed copy to Yervan Pambukian and for his support and everything that he was very, very close to the publication. To me, to Aras Arafian as well, with his knowledge and insights, he has helped us uh, a lot. And he, this is where uh, Yervan Pambukian mentioned uh, the letters that he had found in the ARF archives between Tehlirian and the editors. And uh, we see, it's very interesting uh, seeing uh, Tehlirian's uh, handwriting, his notes, because he would, uh, the, edit, the editors would send the notes to the pages uh, to Tehlirian. He would read them in Morocco. He would make some changes, some corrections, and he would send them back to Cairo to be published. So this has gone on for uh, approximately two years, right before the publication in 1951, 52. And uh, we all know that uh, there are, or there were some controversial uh, issues, an issue relating to Shahan Natali. Uh, no one can deny that uh, he had a central role in the whole operation uh, Nemesis or in the special mission as it was called. And because back then Shahan Natali was not anymore in the ARF uh, party, he was expelled from the party for uh, various reasons. The editors, Simon Bratian and the rest didn't want to mention his name. They were willing to leave his uh, name out, his role out of the whole thing. And uh, hats off to Tehlirian. He was persistent in uh, keeping Shahan Natali's role in it, but they have agreed that they will not mention his name. So uh, they named the operative, the responsible, the comrade. So in this sense, if anyone knows the story would see that that person is Shahan Natali himself. And, uh, and more similar uh, notes and corrections and changes have taken place uh, in, in the publication of 1953. Um, there has been a second publication in 1956 in Cairo again. And afterwards, the other publication was in 1980. Uh, it's called the Tehlirian Artara Hadouitse. Uh, published in Beirut in, in 1981, sorry, uh, published in, by Hamaskain in Beirut uh, on the 60th occasion of the act. I, I can share this uh, with you just a moment, please. And I'll show that to you, the, the book, just a moment. And so afterwards, they published, they republished uh, that book uh, once again in 2000 and, uh, and, one, and one. So this is the first uh, uh, book which mentioned, which talks about the Tehlirian issue and, uh, and some other archival uh, issues in the back, in the back pages. Uh, but we all know that uh, the, uh, um, the court procedures, the court proceedings, they were published in early 1920s by the Mahitarist. 
but that, that was not true. And one thing that I really want to mention, there is this misconception that uh, Tehlirian was uh, at home in Yerzinga during the genocide. Uh, he has seen his uh, family killed, his sisters. Tehlirian didn't have any sisters. Uh, he wasn't even in Yerzinga during uh, that time. So I would like to think that with this book, Tehlirian wanted to come clear that uh, he was somehow lying at the court, saying that he was present, he had seen his family get killed. He wasn't. He was a volunteer with Antranik's battalion. He was from the South Caucasus, from Armenia, from Tbilisi, Yerevan, going uh, towards Gars, Van, and the other regions. So the book is very, very interesting. Uh, it is interesting from many aspects, from first of all, telling the truth, uh, in one of my interviews with uh, an Armenian newspaper, the Aztak in Beirut, um, some, uh, they, I was asked as to why they, we haven't had the publication earlier or why didn't we have an English uh, translation? Well, I said, I don't know. But the fa fact is that we have now, we have one now. And uh, so I wanted to tell uh, the story, this heroic story of Armenian uh, history. We need to tell these stories. Uh, besides everything else, we also need uh, this story as a micro history of our of the Armenian genocide. Because Tehlirian, I don't know how many of you have read the Armenian or the English uh, books. Uh, and I'm happy to say that now there is English. <laughs> and uh, but we all need uh, to read read it because Within the book, there are many, many micro histories of the Armenian genocide. Uh, he was an organ, uh, orphan uh, gatherer. Uh, he was part of the Sepastazi uh, with Murad. They were gathering orphans uh, of the, Arme the Armenian orphans. A very, very sad story of, uh, of the genocide. And they managed to gather all these orphans from the Kurds, the, that the Kurds had taken the little boys and especially uh, girls. Also, I would like to see this book, the English translation of the book, uh, in uh, libraries, in universities. Uh, today, I learned that uh, in Cyprus, the Armenian National Committee of Cyprus uh, will be uh, giving the books to the Cypriot universities and libraries. Uh, on Saturday, this Saturday, uh, we will have uh, an event at the Armenian Genocide Museum and Institute. We have also discussed how we can incorporate this issue in the Armenian uh, textbooks. Uh, I know that in the US, uh, there are Armenian genocide uh, studies, uh, textbooks, uh, programs. I would like to see this book, uh, uh, the real story of Tehlirian, the real story of the Operation Nemesis, uh, be incorporated uh, or included uh, in these uh, educational uh, programs. We have included, as I said, maps, uh, footnotes, annotations. Uh, it's everything put into context. And uh, I would also like to say that now currently I'm working as well. We're working on having the book um, as an ebook uh, and an audio book because we want it to be uh, as widely uh, read, uh, geographically being all over, and not have the constraints of the post offices and everything, because I have seen in this short time that uh, that is a constraining, it is constraining about uh, uh, the book coming here in Armenia or anywhere else. So we are working on having an ebook, uh, having the audio book as well, uh, to to be as fully in these modern times on, on on all platforms for anyone to be able uh, to read it. Um, and I really would like to be this book, the translation of the English one, uh, to be a beginning of uh, correct academic discussions, the story to be real, the real story to be out there and use it as it, it should be used. Uh, and I would really like to mention once again that if it wasn't uh, for Carla, uh, who introduced me to Ara Sarafian, uh, we wouldn't have at least the English book as we have it now. So that's it from me. Thank you again, everyone. 
especially on this very special day that you're joining about the book. And uh, I am open to any questions that uh, you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Beto. Uh, by the way, did you, were you trying to share images? Uh, I, I, I'll share one now. So I'm not sure if it will be shared or not. Okay. So, so can you can you see this now? Yes. Okay. You can but see I, this. Okay. But I see your uh, tell me your your Twitter feed. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Okay. So, <laughs> uh, so I want I really want you to see this. So this is a tweet. I will talk about it a little bit later. So this is about the history of Armenia. I have replied to history of Armenia. Please note that I have translated and published uh, his memoirs, Tehlirian's memoirs, because um, they had some really, really not correct uh, tweets about this. I will show you later on. And I said, whatever we post, write, it has to be double, treble checked for fact and truth. So this is very important from a translator and from an academic and from all aspects to say what is needed uh, to say. What was that uh, tweet? It was a tweet on uh, uh, about a Narcissian school in Tbilisi, in Tiflis, saying that many, many prominent Armenians were there. And one of those Armenians is uh, Sohomon Tehlirian himself. You can see this here. Sohomon Tehlirian, assassin of Talat Pasha, one of the main perpetrators of the Armenian genocide. So this is utter nonsense. Tehlirian hasn't been anywhere close to that school. Um, and I replied to them, what is the source that Tehlirian has graduated Nersian school in Tbilisi? What's that school? And I get a link into an even funnier uh, tweet. <laughs> And I reply, this is not true, et cetera, et cetera. You can see it here. You can see it here, et cetera, et cetera. And this is that very funny Hayaren, uh, Handra Kidaran. You can see it. This is Tehlerian Sohobon with very all factual errors. You can see it. So I really want the book, this book. And this is why my last tweet, uh, Mark, that you said. So I really want this book and any book that we publish, Armenian books, historical books, academic books, to be as um, bulletproof as possible. We have to be very, very strict with ourselves first to have the exact and the correct data, the books, the research, and then publish whatever we will be publishing. So I really want this book to be a beginning or to be part of, uh, of this, uh, be it in school, in academia, in anywhere that we will be. So this is why I'm sharing this tweet, Mark. So thank you. That was it. I, I hope you're not trying to tell me that I can't believe everything I read on the internet. Of course, of course, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but we have to be very, very careful on what we say, because, I mean, it's been in this date and time, uh, we know that it's being used and abused in these very, very difficult times for Armenia, for Artsakh, for Armenians ourselves. So we really have to have our things uh, together and be truthful and correct about it. Absolutely. Yeah, thank so you. So while other questions are coming, uh, I wanna mention that, that Carla has posted in the chat uh, the link for the, for the short film that, that she did that, and which we attempted to show. And uh, we will also post a link on the NASA website when we post the link to the YouTube video for this program. I'm also posting in the chat uh, a link for the um, to purchase the book from the NASA bookstore, uh, which we encourage you to do or to find it somewhere else. Are you showing other images, Beto? Yeah, I'm sure showing some other books here. Uh, this is Vahan Minakhorian's book, but Vahan Minakhorian who, had, who has written Tehlirian's uh, memoirs. Can you see it? I only see that we can only see the thumbnails. Why is that? I, I think when you are sharing screen, you have to share it to the uh, large image and you can't open it while. Anyway, this is this is anyway, okay. Zoom inside baseball stuff, I guess. No, yeah, it's okay. Anyway, yeah, okay. Yes. Our Havirki or Hellish Days, 1915. And the parts that uh, Tehlirian is uh, referring. Uh, 
uh, to what he had seen during his retreat from uh, Van to the Caucasus with the Rus uh, after the Russians left with the Armenian course. Uh, Vahal Minakhorian himself being a survivor of the genocide, he could really, really put what Tehlirian had seen into words. So I believe, we believe that uh, that part is totally Vahal Minakhorian writing and feeling Tehlirian himself and putting it into words. So this is very, very uh, important uh, a collaboration for the book, for Vahan Minakhorian himself and Tehlirian himself. So anyway, yeah. Okay, anyway, so if there are any questions, I can, yes. yeah. I can, uh, yes. First question, and I've we've done over the past 10 years, roughly, uh, several programs on, on Tehlirian and on uh, Operation Nemesis. And I wanted to ask you a question that I've asked others. Why do you think it has it took so long for so many of these materials to appear in English? Or how do you uh, view the, the flourishing in the past decade of a of, uh, number of books, memoirs, scholarly works devoted to this subject? Uh, how, how do you uh, account for that at this stage in, in time? Um, well, Mark, most of the books, most of the publications uh, came about the genocide's uh, centenary. Um, True. Exactly. So why? I don't know. The centenary, maybe. So this, for example, the nemesis, the mission special in French. Uh, yes, we have the same problem. We have the same problem again, yeah, anyway. Um, the other one, um, the Operation Nemesis by from the USA, uh, again. Now we can see it, I don't know yes. why it's happening. This is one of them, Eric Bogosian's book. So most of them came, uh, came uh, around uh, the centenary of the genocide. Um, I don't know why, or I, I can understand why, but we should have had that not on the anniversary, we should have had that uh, many, many uh, years ago or keep doing that. Um, my book could have been uh, even earlier. I don't know if uh, I had it, but nevertheless, uh, whenever we do that, we should really be very uh, straightforward and uh, say the true story of uh, what happened. Um, we have uh, Marianne McCurdy's book. Uh, accidentally uh, finding her grandfather's uh, archives, which gave a new light uh, on the whole uh, Operation Nemesis. I don't know how many similar books there are in the US or around the world uh, on the Nemesis. I don't know. Uh, so will we have new information in the coming years? Probably, most probably. Um, everyone discusses, everyone says that I have seen the files in the ARF archives. I have read them, I have published them. Uh, are they really there? I don't know. Because this operation was very, very, uh, very secret operation. There are not, uh, almost nothing in, in writing, some bits and pieces. So this is a very interesting issue. Uh, but whatever we have, whatever limited uh, sources we have, but we have to say the truth. And the truth is, of course, now uh, Tehlirian's words and the book in English. Uh, Carla, uh, if you're still here, I'm going to ask you to repost the links in the chat and make sure you set, you can post it to uh, everyone, not just to the hosts. And, yeah, I'm and still here. And I think you stopped you stop my video for that's why you can't see me. I'm so sorry. That's OK. I'd rather see Beto than see me. <laughs> okay. if, you can, if you can repost the links yes, uh, I will in, the, do that. in the chat. Thank you. Uh, okay. Question uh, and comment from, uh, since since I'm, I'm going to identify the person in this case, uh, from Roxanne McCaskian. Hello, Roxanne. Thanking you for doing this great work. The Genocide Education Project has just created a lesson plan for teachers about the Solomon Tolerian trial and has had already created a mock trial activity for classroom use. This English trans translation of the memoir will be a useful addition to this high school curriculum. And uh, what do you see, uh, Bedo, 
I wanted to ask as the educational uh, takeaway from from this uh, memoir uh, that that you've translated, or or what are some of the educational takeaways? Um, well, first of all, uh, in the book, uh, there are many micro histories. Um, one of them, uh, his role as an orphan gatherer. Uh, I don't know how much uh, that is uh, common. That's a very, very sad uh, story. Uh, we can take that. Of course, in genocide prevention, of course, uh, in legal, of course, affairs. Uh, he said one thing during the court, but actually he was lying, as we know. Um, and then the most, the main case that uh, if there is no justice, when the whole uh, people is being uh, butchered, uh, do we get uh, justice in our hands? Uh, what do we what we what do we do it? Uh, and uh, the whole story being put in real uh, context. Um, the German uh, justice were they against Tahlirian? Were they pro Taliat? What were they? So we can see all of this in the book. Um, it's very. So this is why I'm saying, Magma, there are many, many micro histories within one book. Uh, and uh, if you want, I can, uh, maybe I can read uh, the chapters of the book, if it's interesting. I don't know how many of them have the book or have seen it or have read it. Meaning the chapter titles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The chapter yes, titles. please. Um, well, here I, ha I have before read this. Um, in the original uh, publication in 1953, uh, there was close to 25, 30 pages of Bahan Navasartian's introduction back in, back in the 50s. Um, we decided to leave that out because the context has changed, so many things have changed, and we wanted to focus only on what Tehlirian uh, had to say. So uh, this is important to note as well, but it is in the Armenian, anyone interested, he can read or they can read it in the Armenian version of it. But we started with Tahirian's uh, very famous letter to his mother. So the first one is, uh, I don't know if you can see it, is to my mother. We have that letter and then we start uh, with the chapters. Uh, from Serbia to Vasporagan, because um, uh, this is where he volunteers and from Serbia, from Belgrade, where he was, he goes to uh, Caucasus, Tbilisi, Yerevan, and to Vaspuragan, the great catastrophe, Medziagher in Armenian. Uh, someone asked me during one of the presentations, and why do you have Medziagher and you don't have the Armenian genocide? Well, I said, I don't decide uh, what to write, genocide or Yagher. He had Medziagher, so the Medziagher is a catastrophe. So we have these issues as well. Um, everyone uh, needs and wants to see what they have in their mind. The next chapter is with Murad, Muradi head. This is where he has seen the orphans, he gathers the orphans, he's seen the destruction and everything. On the way back, the chapter is called, We Lost Our Fatherland. This is during the retreat with the hardships and everything that he's going through. This is where he gets injured as well. Uh, we lost our fatherland. Uh, the next one is in Constantinople, police. This is where uh, he shoots, he kills uh, an Armenian traitor, uh, Harutyun Magardichian. So this was his uh, baptism of fire, uh, we can say, which opened the door for him to go into uh, the Operation Nemesis. To America, to New York, Boston, Watertown. And uh, on page 162, uh, he's got a very... Uh, warm words for the Hyrenic, for the Hyrenic Association. Uh, I suggest since you are in Watertown and many of us are from the US and have been in there, read it. And very, very warm words about the Hyrenic Institute and what it represents for the Armenians in the diaspora, and what it represented back then. On the trail of the prey, you understand from America, Geneva, and then on to Berlin, the, men's, the monster fell on the sidewalk. This is where he's shot him, of course. The trial, the prosecutor demands the death penalty and the last chapter, no, he is not guilty. So that's it. <laughs> and in every chapter we see so many new things, so many information and details.
We can't hear you, Mark. Right. I'll get it one of these days. Uh, having read the introduction to this translation, um, which talks uh, in, in some detail, uh, this is the introduction is written by Ara Sarafian. The, the introduction talks in some detail about the process of the writing of the book. Uh, it, it, it was published in 1953, but my uh, impression based on that introduction is that it was written, or at least it was begun to be written considerably earlier. Can you, can you in short form, tell us a, a little bit about that process? Yes. Um, well, as we mentioned, uh, Tehlirian was in Belgrade back then, uh, and alongside Bahan Minakhorian and Arshaluz Astazadarian, they had already started writing uh, his memoirs. We don't know if uh, this is purely a Tehlirian initiative, Minakhorian or Astazadarian or a party initiative. Uh, but we know that uh, the book was written, the memoirs handwritten uh, in early 40s, 41, 42, during the war. And after the war that uh, Tehlirian had to escape Belgrade, when the communists had come into Belgrade, so he had to escape. And he mentions that uh, they had three copies with them and they had to leave them in Belgrade. Uh, we don't know what has happened to these original uh, copies. And we don't know why or if uh, in Egypt, the Husaper, which copy they had, or if they had totally new copy from Tehlirian himself. We don't know these details. Uh, but the book, uh, as we see now, uh, is approximately at a time where these Avengers, uh, Arshavir Shiragyan, Aram Yerganyan, they had written their own memoirs. So we assume, we assume that this could be an ARF party initiative when these guys were relatively getting older to write their memoirs for future uh, reference. Uh, not exclusively uh, or strictly party publications, but just historical personal memoirs. So it could be this. Uh, in this sense, uh, we assume that uh, it's a party directive, we assume, but we cannot say for sure. We, we haven't seen anything saying that you have to write it. But we can see this uh, in the uh, VEM uh, letters between Vratian, Tehlir, and the rest that it could have been a party directive for these people, Shiragyan, Yerganyan, Tehlirian, and the rest, to write, to start writing their uh, memoirs. Yeah. Great, thank you. And and for those who want more more detail, again, it's uh, we recommend reading the this translation in the introduction. Uh, comment uh, from another one of the writers who's contributed to the the uh, again to this upsurge in in knowledge about Operation Nemesis, Marion McCurdy. Marion, thank you. Uh, she thanks you for your translation and says that she went through the book carefully and it dovetailed with the records she found in her grandfather's archives. The And uh, this is a comment, which I will read. The educational value of these materials is invaluable, not only for the Armenian genocide, but for genocides in general. When there is no justice, survivors will be driven to seek it themselves. And pointing out, and thank you for this again, Marion, that her book, Sacred Justice, is coming out in a new edition. So we will look forward to seeing that. Thank you for your, your own great work, Marion. I'm happy that Marion, she's here, she's participating. And uh, the book that she also, I, I mentioned it. So it's really, really adds value to the whole, uh, to the whole uh, operation, Nemesis. So yeah, so good to see you, Marion, at least like this. <laughs> Question uh, is, what does the memoir tell us about Tellurian's state of mind and mental health during the period of the planning and the assassination? Since there is, there is seems to be a discrepancy between what he showed in to the world and what maybe was actually happening, or maybe not. You you explain better. Uh, well, um, it is true. Uh, that he had some seizures. That is true. And we see this uh, mentioning himself, he, Tehliria, mentioning this uh, in the book, in his memoirs. Um, what he was seeing and what he saw during the whole course had affected him very, very, very much. Uh, it is not in the extent that we think that it was, no. 
uh, it is interestingly enough that he had not any seizures or anything right after he killed Taliat. But uh, it is true that he was suffering a lot, especially, especially uh, when he found out that his mother was killed because he was very much attached to his mother. And the first time that uh, he passes out, uh, he had this seizure, he falls down, it's in their own home when he goes into Yerzunga. Um, did he have any chronic uh, seizures or mental health issues? I wouldn't say so, no. But was he affected? Yes, of course he was. And uh, he sometimes he would say, I would smell blood and I would fall down. Uh, be it in here in Yerevan, when he was shortly in Yerevan, be it in Constantinople, in Berlin, uh, during his uh, volunteer uh, time when he was, uh, but not afterwards. So maybe because it was his feelings were very intense, very emotional, he had the seizures, but not afterwards. But it is not as uh, big as we think that it is now. He was perfectly sane when he executed. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, this is a question, might be a question for Carla, uh, and we will let you show yourself again, Carla. If you just turn your camera on, we'd be very happy to have you back. Uh, this is from a, a an, an individual who says uh, she's a relative of the Talirian family uh, who, who traveled to uh, Vari Pakarich in 2007 and wants to know if the small dangerous road into the village has been improved since then and if you or anyone has recommendations for those who might want to travel there now especially post earthquake yes. uh, actually i think mark you turned my camera off so because i can't turn it back on so, <laughs> <laughs> so that's okay what a tyrant to... <laughs> i have become Okay, so I have to start my video. There I go. There I go. There we go. Okay, thank you for that question. Um, the the little road up to Pakadish is still there. And if you follow Google Map, um, rather than using your own brain, <laughs> if you follow Google Map, you'll go on that little dirt road and feel like you're in the middle of nowhere and you're about to fall over the edge, which is what we did driving up. But then we found that there was a, a perfectly good paved highway uh, that's coming out of it. The thing, the thing about Pakadish now um, is that the we we went to both the upper and lower parts, um, and there is basic, very basic agriculture there, um, beekeeping, which which I mentioned. We were given honey from farmers in both in both villages, and uh, and my feeling was we did we met and talked to uh, the locals, and our Sarafian speaks Turkish, and also. Um, uh, I think one of the people we spoke to, the farmers, was Kurdish, and they had an interesting conversation about the genocide, and quite um, civil. And uh, this, and it was clear that they want tourism. Now that was before the earthquake, obviously. Um, so, but they want they want people to come and visit. It wasn't like go away. And they and they actually the locals were the ones who showed us around. They showed us the two churches, not just the ruin we found, but what was an Armenian church converted into a mosque. And they were the ones who showed us the closet that had the old altar in it. So there is, um, I think we also forget that the Kemak area also includes Dersim Kurds. And so the, the history of their experience as well informs this. Um, there is an interesting new film coming out uh, soon, I hope, by Nubar Alexanian, and he shows pictures of the Kamak Gorge area where the waters are very high. Um, so this is moving out of Pakadish and into the Kemak area where the Euphrates River is. So when we were there, the river was very low. Um, but if you're there when the river is running high, it's it's daunting. It's absolutely daunting. I mean, it's the torrent, the force of the river, and it's quite um, astounding to see it. I mean, for me, uh, to see the images of the Euphrates River going through, and it's a very large and long gorge. If you go all the way to like halfway through, you're in Agen, which is a very well-known well Armenian village. And then if you go all the way to the end, a hundred kilometers in, if you, you're not too far from Harper. That's how, you know, that's the, the length of the, the geographically, that's the area we're talking about. So um, I found it fascinating to go there. And 
what Beto was talking about, the book covering some of the battles and personal experiences of Tolarian in, in, you know, pr uh, in the period before and after the genocide, what he was experiencing, you see the terrain on the, on the um, Erzinga side go on the way to Erzurum. You see when he's talking about, you know, almost losing his life, the icy snow. And I was trying to picture that. When you go there, you can, you can picture it. So uh, I was very glad to have had the opportunity. Ara Serafian is um, in the Harpert region now as we speak, and he's looking at not Car not Erzurum and Erzinga, but Harpert. Harpert was not uh, affected by the earthquake, at least as far as we know. Um, and I, but I can't speak for Erzinga. Thank you, thank you. Uh, I've gotten a couple of messages from people that they might be having, there's some, might be some issue with the q and A. I I don't quite understand because obviously some people have been able to ask questions. So I apologize if anyone has been trying to post questions and has not been able to. Uh, but let me then take this moment just again to say thank you to, to Bedo for, for your outstanding work uh, and, and the Gomidas Institute for publishing it and for Carla for your uh, important role in this as well. We are all beneficiaries of, of this work. Those of us especially whose facility in Armenian is not, uh, re reading Armenian is not, not what it might be. So uh, it, it, it's important to open these works, not just to other Armenians, but of course to the, a wider reading audience that, that can benefit from, from having from having access to these works, whether scholars or just people interested in, in learning more about the history on their own. So thank you. Uh, and thank you to the Armenian Film Foundation and the Arat Eskijin Museum for joining with Nasser on this special event today. Please, and those of you in the audience, thank you for joining us. Try to find a copy of, uh, of the work, support Bedo and, and uh, support the, the work that's been done uh, to make this available. Thank you. See you soon. And we'll get this Zoom thing perfect any day now, I'm sure. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>